I was during the formal, I started getting emails. The school's like 100 years old. Yes, well, so it's in the first, the 
Congressman? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newville? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. Madam President Graziano? Aye. Thank you. Hey, Ms. Cabin and God. Thank you, Mr. Court. At this time, would you please call the list of the presenters for the awards and presentation period? Yes. We have a public service award going to a Mr. Walter Bruce Fullerton. The Honorable Dwight C. Jones, Mayor of Richmond and Honorable Members of City Council, do hereby unite in solidarity and common purpose to officially recognize, honor, and celebrate Mr. Walter Bruce Fullerton for his more than 39 years of public government services on behalf of Richmond residents. Joining the Richmond Department of Police Division of Emergency Communications on January 6, 1973, Mr. Bulletin retired on March 1, 2012 as a supervisor in that division, a position he served for 27 years. Today, the length of his tenure service is the longest on record of any member of Richmond Department of Police Division of Emergency Communications. Responding to hundreds of emergency 911 calls a day, Richmond professional communication officers provide intake, assessment, crisis management, dispatch, and support on behalf of the Richmond Department of Police, Richmond Department of Fire and Emergency Services, and Richmond Ambulance Authority, and other government departments as needed. Over the years, Mr. Bulletin managed thousands of emergency calls on behalf of Richmond residents in need and was respected for his fellow first responders for his name abilities in expertly manage, managing crisis situations and providing information directly, support, and resources needed to respond effectively. Due to his dedicated service, Mr. Bulletin was considered to be a trusted friend, an integral part, brother, and member of the police, fire, and emergency service family. As testament to his outstanding service and commitment to Richmond citizens and the first respond community, Mr. Bulletin earned numerous commendations and awards over the years which includes the Richmond Department of Police, Life Saving Bar, and Meritorious Police Beauty Medal. Known for his professionalism and expertise, Mr. Bulletin, an example is one that has helped the Richmond Police Department, Richmond Department of Fire and Emergency Services, and Richmond Ambulance Authority, earn well-deserved reputations of their dedication to our community. In America, public government service is considered to be among the most noble and important work that a person can do and through his actions, Mr. Bulletin has proven his dedication to and support of the principles and creed within, written into the founding documents of our great nation, and that our individual destinies and that of our families, communities, cities, state, and country include not only the aspirations of our federal constitutional republic, but the support of all its citizens in realizing the fulfillment of its promises. Now, therefore, Richmond City Council and Mayor Dwight C. Jones do hereby recognize, honorable, honor, and celebrate Mr. Walter Bulletin for his more than 39 years of public government service working for the Richmond Department of Police Division of Emergency Communication on behalf of Richmond residents and bestow the Richmond Public Service Award on him in appreciation of his work that has helped to make our city an even better and safer place to live, work, love, learn, play, visit, and raise a family.
into the phone, you've always been so nice, so calm, so collected. And I know, I know one time you told me, Reba, just calm down, calm down. Because <laughs> I know that, um, like I said, you, your job is very, was very, very stressful. And no computers, no this, no that, and 39 years being there. And I know that you're an icon, and I know that um, you've probably been a mentor to so many of those people. And at 911, I mean, what we do, we didn't have 911 out there. And people such as you that took your time to always, you know, be calm and, and just listen and, and, and give advice. And, and um, I, I know you have so many stories you could tell us, you know, what you had to do and, and how the outcome and all that was. But again, thank you. 39 years of service and for all that you've done for our city of Richmond. And could your family and friends please stand or would they like to come to your home? Come on, Keith.
have a um, proclamation presented to Mr. John Rupp. And it reads as follows, further increase public awareness and support families, the medical community, and organizations in helping the fight prevent and cure this disease and to officially proclaim the month of November 2012 as Richmond Pancreatic Council Awareness Month. Sure. 
services to support the National Adoption Month, Richmond City Council and Mayor Dwight C. Jones in the account plan in the month of November 2012 as Richmond Adoption Awareness Month and called to the observance the attention of all Richmond residents. November is National Adoption Month. It started back in the mid-90s. And as an attorney who works as a guardian of Lydon to help place children and find adoptive members for them to work through the process to make sure that children have stability, I gotta tell you, November is absolutely the right month for it to be Richmond Adoption Month. Adoption Day in the city falls in November. And November is a time of family. It's a time of sharing, it's a time of thanksgiving. And that's what adoption really is all about. It's about taking children uh, from a temporary existence and placing them in permanence, from chaos and giving them stability. And I gotta tell you, every year when I get to go to the adoption day ceremonies down at the Richmond Juvenile uh, Domestic Relations Court, it is an incredible experience to see new families form. And uh, on behalf of the City of Richmond, on behalf of City Council, thank you all so much for the work that the Department of Social Services is doing to encourage adoption and to make sure that children have that safe place to go each and every night. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of my colleague, Carolyn Graham, and the Director of Social Services, I will definitely pass this on to them. Been an eligibility worker in social services for years myself. I do understand and do appreciate this. Thank you very much. Madam President, those are all of you awards and presentations for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Clark. At this time, could we please have a review of the list of amendments to tonight's agenda? Okay, tonight's consent agenda, we have item number one, problems number 2012-16, continuing to November 26th. Item number two, ordinance 2012-29, continuing to November 12th. Item number three, ordinance number 2012-64, continuing to November 26th. Item number four, ordinance number 2012-141, continuing until November 26th. Item number six, go to the regular agenda. Item number 17, appointments number 2012-192. Uh, continue to November 26. Item number 18, appointments number 2012-193. Continue to November 12th meeting. Item number 19, ordinance number 2012-194, move to the regular agenda. Item number 20, resolution number 2012-R43, continue until November 26th. On the regular agenda, we have item number 31, continue until November 26th. That's ordinance number 2012-4, continue until November 26th. Item number 33, ordinance number 2012-175 is withdrawn. And item number 34, ordinance number 2012-176 withdrawn. Item number 35, ordinance number 2012-188, continue to November 26. And item number 36, ordinance number 2012-189, continue to November 12. Does any member of council have any additional amendments to tonight's agenda? Any motion? Do 
to accept these amendments. Hey, we need a motion to accept the amended agenda as presented. Mr. Jewell? So, so moved, Mr. Clark. Thank you. Second. Yes, sir. I second that motion. Thank you. Okay, we're voting on the amended agenda. Mr. Khan? Aye. Mr. Sam? Aye. Mr. Hill? Aye. And Vice President Robinson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newman? Aye. Ms. Crown? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. And President Graziano? Aye. Thank you. The amended agenda is before me. Thank you, Mr. Burke. At this time, we we'll take paper number 620, 12 Item number 6 is for Mr. 2012-177 to transfer $2,651,986 from the FY12-13 general fund budget and $396,000 from the FY12-13 Department of Public Utilities for Internal Services Fund Budget for the purpose of relocating city departments from locations owned by the city along the war bar to a location that the city plans to acquire at 1638, 1650, and 1700 Commerce Road. Thank you. And are there any persons, is there, are there any comments from council before we go to the public hearing? Just a question. Yes, sir. I, I apologize for the not in formal meeting. I'm sure you all discussed this. We did. Um, but um, uh, to what extent um, have, I'm not crazy, how far are we towards acquiring this property off Commerce Road, or is it acquired? We are in the, I'll let, how did we let um, economic development answer that? Ms. Farr? Thank you. 
fiscal year, we go through all the grants that have been open and uh, operating to see which ones can be closed. We have identified some, and we check with the grantor to make certain of those funds are expected to be returned to them. We have done about three hundred eighty-three thousand dollars in that uh, piece of money, and then there's an additional one hundred thousand that we're proposing to move from the operating budget in DPW that was intended for property rental to be moved to CIP. Um, that's a total of two million six hundred fifty-one thousand. In addition to that, um, a transfer from utilities of three hundred ninety-six thousand, and that was um, calculated as a fleet services vehicles for all five utilities. That's a pro rata share of what utilities uh, needs to contribute to this project. So those dollars in total, 3048000 added to the uh, project that's already in CIP, the 3375000 That collected is what's being proposed for this project. That helps. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions?
to the White House. But these are these are relocating um, uh, Richmond Public Schools functions from the White House, which is on the boulevard, to this particular building. Um, what is the name of that street that the schools was using for warehouse um, on the opposite oh, side, on the other side of We're referring to Arlington Boulevard. Arlington, yeah. Uh, is that taken out of commission? Is, does that remain in place? Uh, Richmond Public School still has uh, materials and, and things stored in that building. However, uh, that building needs a significant amount of repair. So we would not move anything there for storage, obviously, that makes sense. But uh, I thought we were taking that building out of commission. Arlington Road has not been surplus by Richmond Public Schools. Say that uh, let's 
My name is Chris Dorsey. Um, uh, I'm gonna, gonna start out um, by talking about uh, this document, showing to the people, and uh, showing to media as I see uh, uh, Robert Zuba walking off. Um, this is the United States Constitution. This is the law of the land. Um, and uh, what we have in, in this body and in every other body um, that, uh, that is represented by the current United States government is a treasonous and unconstitutional entity that is controlled by a central banking cartel that represents itself in this country by something called the Federal Reserve Bank, which is a privately owned central bank that controls and operates everything this government does, even down to um, people on the Economic Development Authority who pull the puppet strings on you guys up here. Um, so we'll start off with Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution, which is the enumerated powers of Congress. That is the closest to the people in our representative republic. And it states in Article 1, Section 8 that the Congress has the duty to control the economy of the United States. And it says that in a number of different places in clauses 1 through 7. Then it goes on to state that the enforcement arm of the, the money interest is controlled by the same body, which is the closest to the people in our representative republic. And that states that Congress declares war and controls all actions of the United States military. Now, what we have in evidence uh, in, in Congress is the chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank, Ben Bernanke, telling the United States Congress it is the Federal Reserve Bank that controls and, and, uh, um, and is the overseer of the U.S. economy. And we have the so-called Defense Secretary, Leon Panetta, former head of the Central Intelligence Agency, which is not the intelligence arm of the U.S. government, it's the intelligence arm of the private central banking cartel that we're talking about, states that it is United Nations and NATO which control the actions of the United States military. That is treason. It's been evidence for many people to see in, uh, uh, in, in Congress, on television, on C-SPAN, etc., on CNN, whatever the other, you know, corporately owned media outlets are. So, what do we do about this? And what do we have coming up? We have a fraudulent election. Uh, you all know about the fraudulent election in, in the city of Richmond. Mr. Alan Jackson, he's complicit in, in these crimes, and so are you all. Um, because there has been a, a, a concerted effort from the Registrar's Office, the State Board of Elections, and the Richmond Electoral Board to subvert this process of elections, which results in, you know, nothing but fraud, no matter which CIA actor or uh, which controlled opposition candidate gets into the office. And we have a federal court case, Shirley Harvey and I, and others, showing the overwhelming evidence that's already been ruled on by three different judges that this upcoming election in the city of Richmond is a fraud, but but it goes further than that. Our entire electoral system is a fraud. All one has to do is read the corporate mainstream media. Mr. Dorsey, excuse me, your time is up. Okay, well, thank you. And I'll close with this because I'm solutions oriented. And I've been talking to members of the military and former members of the military. It is time to enforce the Constitution, and it is time, and members of the police department like Captain William Smith, it is time to arrest the leaders of the institutions that control the illegitimate United States government. Thank you very much. That's the only solution.
<laughs> and I was experience with them. Then they were invited to the Republican Party's uh, assembly, General Assembly, where they sat down with the governor of the Northern Party, and they had lunch as you go, and they got just to get a tour of the Confederate and the Civil War stuff they'd never seen before, and went back to John Marshall High School and wrote essays and things on it, because they were going to get grades behind it. Why? Because in more than 10 years ago, and when Chief Monroe and Officer Dixon came and seen what I was doing out in the county with the city kids, they wanted me to come to the city and do it because I was taking over 100 kids from the city out to a gymnasium in the county because there was no room for them to play in the city. Mr. Jewel was, if ever, they worked hard to get the old Armstrong building opened up. But when I went in there to work for Park and Recreation, I was told that I did not enforce the pants up policy. What type of pants up policy? I want young men to learn how to be young men. They about the world to get a job. Since I've been back with their parents to show up for the first time, I get they miss me too. Because parents now are taking many of their kids over to a facility that we're also using, Mr. President, Madam President, way out in the county. We still can help parents to drive their kids way out in the county to use a gym because there's no way for them to use. Because there's no money. But thank God we got favor with the people out there in the church. We let us use it for free on Tuesday night. Uh, I'm going to build a close because I can enforce my policy. I still believe a kid needs to get his grades up and his pants up. And I fight it every step of the way. And I'm criticized for being a piece of work, but I am. But I thank this council for the ones that help try to support me, Mr. 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 Tyler, and more than you will. And Mr. Conner, I've been thinking about in your district now. I remember years ago when my kids put on your t-shirts and march the street with you. I was able to get them to do that. Now, here's some front clouds I'm passing out to you tonight. That's about the program we have on Saturday afternoon. You see it all over, get these. I've had the network with another program called yeah, People Better Business. Okay, People Better Business. Okay, People Better Business because what it is is, I cannot keep handling all this financial money. So People Better Business is an incorporation. We've got it with me and network it. But they can handle the finance for me and the kids. And with these basketball, right now we have a gym, we don't pay anybody to use it. Mr. Conway in need of eight basketball. I know they city councilman here. We're in need of a first aid kit because they won't let us go to the gym anymore than we have a first aid kit. Well, I'm going to say this, man. We just need to back our first aid kit. I don't know what we got to against these kids, but I'm going to still fight for them, and I am back. And the election is coming up. Thank you. Thank you. We're glad to have you back. Thank you for all the work you do. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, sir.
No recreational services for teenagers. It's an abomination. Uh, nobody seems to be uh, 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 urgent about fixing this problem. Uh, I've got in Midlothian Village 200 units, 75 teenagers, nothing to do. No basketball court even on the premises. Do you think they can walk across the street and get a pickup game and George with outside? The basketball poles are cut down to the asphalt. Not even an outdoor court. That's no way to treat children. And, uh, and that minimum we can do is help this man who I've seen his work. I've seen his magic. I won't even call it work. It's magic what he's done at one time with 50 to 75 kids, many of them beefing with each other from different developments. They don't even mix. But they will come together and play as a team in ways you've never seen before. And when you take them home, yes, because you had to take them home, they, you were using a gymnasium on the Zaria Avenue, Mr. Hilbert, uh, having to pay rent $120 an hour to, uh, for the kids to play out there. That's outrageous. I believe that recreation ought to be as free to children as law enforcement is to the rest of us. In fact, the more we provide recreation for children, the less law enforcement we should need. We got it backwards. I'm saying this to this administration that we got to step up our game. Thank you, you, I'm not done. You can't continue to, to take taxes from everybody, but only provide services to two thirds of the city and think nothing's wrong with not providing services for the other third. Mr. Jewel, Mr. Jewel, these kids got together twenty dollars last year and went down to Hillside Court with Chief uh, uh, Norwood and picked up paper in the house and thought with him. Really? Show that they went down there in the uniform top. They picked up trash to Hillside Court to show they were willing to work along with the police department. And Chief Norwood picked up paper with those kids. They felt so good they worked with the police chief who cared about them. I'm and Chief Norwood does care about them. Dr. Merrifield is in the back. He's been out with me to see that area. Mr. Connor had a lady call me from uh, what was it, Blue Ridge apartment complexes recently. They're in the city off Carnation Road. They got no use services out there. They're clamoring for help. We got to fix this. And you, this budget you, is coming up, and I'm, urging, I'm, I'm just making a note I, for I, all I, of us to know that we need to fix this problem this budget year. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Thank, Thank you, Bishop West. Thank you. We appreciate it and congratulations very much. Thank you. Thank you. Madam President, I just want to something too. You know, we have a lot of newspapers in the city of Richmond, a lot of magazines, a lot of radio stations. It seems like they would come out and help um, citizens like Bishop West and others. There are so many others that come out and take care of the children, help the children, but when they need a helping hand or need some funds, nobody's there to help them. And, and like we've said, they make a difference in these children's lives. So I, I think more people need to get involved and help. Thank you, Ms. Trammell. Next speaker. The next speaker is El Shirley Hobby. She's not here. She's not coming. Thank you very much. Next speaker. The next speaker is Marie Morton Hart.
the trees are good. They're not good to me because I am 75 years old. I have to rake those leaves that fall off those trees. And I told the lady that I talked to her, and Mr. Brown, I hope a storm come that lightning hit him and knock him down to the street, and then you will have to come and get him out of there. Now, what are y'all going to do about these streets? And not only that, but I have tree stumps in my yard that I have to have put solar lights to keep people from visiting me from falling over those very big roots in my yard. And one man came out and he said, he gave me a paper. In, in, in case anyone hurt itself, to file it and turn it into the city attorney. Now I wish you all would come out there and get rid of those streets. Those on the front, but I got leather in the back, y'all. That's not yours, but I want you to take yours out of my front yard. And they're right near the curb. You get you get out the car, there's a cement thing there, and then that's there those roots. And there is there is a lady back there, Lula Jefferson from the mayor's office, Miss Hart, and um, she can't help you. And I hope she will, because I'm sick and tired. Madam President, yes, ma'am. It's you know, I'm glad that Ms. Hart's come here tonight to bring this to our attention because it's not, I mean, it's all over, not only the Eighth District, but all of the city. With these trees are city trees, got root the sidewalks, got the, it's called the carriage walk and all that. But she is 100 percent right when you go in the front yard. It's like from the trees, it's got like thick, like roots. But it's like you don't know, watch where you want, you're gonna fall and stumble over them. And as she said, she's 75, and she has other seniors that come visit her, mm -hmm. and it's not right to give her a piece of paper and tell her that it's my fault to get hurt. Why not and turn it into, I guess, Mr. City Attorney, who's probably got a lot of stuff on his desk right now. But anyway, this, that's not right. The tree needs to come down where we need to take the tree down. Okay. Thank you, John. I think that uh, Ms. Jefferson can help her with that problem. If we can take it down, you know, I don't know anything about this problem. Well, I, I know, Kent, but what I'm trying to say, who knows best? I mean, we don't want to go through the other thing where the tree went through the man's house that, that screamed and hollered over and over that the tree was going to fall, and it did fall, and now we're in lawsuits with that. I mean, suppose she falls and, you know, breaks her hip or her or kills herself or her head or whatever. She's come here tonight to ask us for help, and I know others have been asking on the citizens' request sheets that had these trees trimmed or whatever, because there are city trees that's grown over onto their property that's messing up their yards, their porches, their sidewalks, and all of that. That's what I'm saying. It's not right that we go ahead and just say, well, we'll come back and we'll call you later and get fixed. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not disagreeing with you. I don't know the situation of this tree. Uh, trees are an issue whether you want the trees down or you don't want anybody to touch the tree. I'm just saying trees are an issue and that's why I sent it to it shouldn't take back to Congress to get it taken down and the citizens that live there pay the taxes and all that want the tree to come down. Take it down. And she's the only one who's got a tree there. Okay, next speaker, Mr. Clark. The next speaker is Don Hatcher.
You gotta be strong, don't walk too much. You can baseball bat or something in your hand. Don't nobody see nothing. The business is when you walk on the main rails, the sidewalks are dirty, the streets are dirty. The, the pavement is up to the curb. You can't see the curb. What is going on in the city of Richmond? That we keep taxing people. And we got all the problems we got in this city, and we don't need no help. Nobody's addressing anything. It's sad. I don't have the answer. I can sit in my house and hear gunfire going on. I can sit on my porch and all I hear is cussing and carrying on. Uh, it's just, where, where do you go? How do you, how do you deal with this mess? If they're not been raised to be around this foolishness, nobody sees anything. Nobody wants to do anything. And the game with blacks and whites in this city has gotten worse. I thought we were making progress. We ain't making no progress. We're going backwards. We got some of the most evil white folks I have a girl in this city who does things that are beavers dropping trees on your house. I got a white neighbor that what the house makes though. He comes there and drop a tree on my house. The city come and tell me I got to move it. What kind of law do we have that there is no protection for citizens that's coming to court? I got to go to court. I got to move a tree that may have dropped on my house on purpose. And he's down here in the city hall complaining about my property. And the city of Richmond don't see fit to do anything about all the stuff he has done to our niggas. I don't understand. I'm glad I'm at 72 where maybe I won't live long enough to do some things that I don't want to do. It's sad. I done served this country. I done worked hard. I done raised five kids. And I'm looking at situations in Richmond that haven't gotten any better in 72 years. Nobody sees anything. How can you walk down the streets in the city of Richmond and sidewalks up the dirty and filthy? Trash in the alleys. Alleys erosion away. Poles on the street need to be replaced. You have 30 seconds. Please begin to summarize. I, I don't understand. Maybe somebody can, can, can tell me if I'm completely crazy or what's going on in this city. Nobody sees anything, especially the black neighborhood. You can't walk down the sidewalk without filling trash. Something got to be done. How are you going to deal with it? What are you going to do about it? Why do people have to be so fearful that they can't walk out their house in the dark? Okay, What's going on in this city? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you.
Good evening, my name is um, Craig West, and I reside in um, District 1. Thank you for um, letting me speak. I'm here tonight to speak on concessions that have been made for a construction project, ironically enough, that's located in Franco County, known as Monument Square. This project has created an eyesore and a public safety issue for Richmond residents living adjacent to the site for four or five years. The property, the property located directly across from my home was in need of egress and 
egress for construction vehicles entering and leaving the property. The solution, a cut was made in the right of way, the median separating north and southbound lanes of Willowmont Drive to allow literally hundreds of excavators, dump trucks, and other construction vehicles to turn left off of Whit Street and head north of Willowmont Drive. Not taking into consideration this thoroughfare was not designed to handle the amount or the actual weight of the traffic now using this intersection. My fear is that the end result will render our, our street virtually impassable, resembling the corridor of Patterson Avenue between Westmoreland and Willowong, the intersection of Willowong Drive. This adjustment to the meeting was made without any public proposal and without the approval of residents to which this alteration directly impacts, directly resulting in traffic pattern and public safety issues. Motors routinely ignore no U-turn signage because of the proximity of the easement to the side street of Bron Bromley Lane, and people have taken to turn in south in the northbound lane, right through the median, and then left down southbound Willowmont Drive. The, also, the increased traffic and heavy equipment is a danger to the children in our neighborhood, this bus stop is located just south of this inter intersection. Not to mention the constant flow of joggers, dog walkers, and other pedestrians that use Willowmont for recreation. I'm proposing that our meeting be returned to its original condition and to have the city's engineers properly review and plan this intersection so as not to have every truck, car using Whist Street to access northbound Willowmont headed in the direction of my front yard through this cut in the meeting. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. The next speaker is Penny Parham. I want to say good evening, and I hope a lot of you all will not be here soon. There are some terrible things going on in the city of Richmond. Number one, what Mr. Dorsey was saying, the local election is null and void. There is a lot of corruption going on. And I'm running for the 6th District. I am Theodora Parham, and I'm going to get more votes than you think. In my ballots, um, I found eight names of people, and I'm going to call them off to Quisha Child, Robin Masterville, James Carter, Margaret Johnson, George Johnson, Jetta Goodnight, um, Esther Milner, I'm calling these people names off because these people are legally registered to vote and the registrar's office said that they were felons. Ms. Park, you may not come up here and campaign. You may come up here. It's not about campaigning. It's about these people having the right to vote and the registrar's office says these people are eligible to vote and you all are not going to stop them because they are legal. The next thing I want to say is you all eat real good up here. Well, the people are poor. We, the people for Teddy Parham, feel like you need to start bringing your own meals. From now on, we expect you to bring bag lunches. Number three, we're asking you to take the prayer out of this council because your friends with the nonprofit organizations have taken advantage of the program. I want the um, agent for the Secret Service the agent for the FBI, the agent for the Internal Revenue, to know that we have evidence, we have a lot of evidence. You all sent the, Byron Marshall sent the cameraman out, the only man with the camera besides these guys, but that's the same dirty thing you did when I went to that Democratic meeting for We Were Trammel. Some of you all talked to, met these people in the office with Dwight Jones, a hundred Dirty people talk to Reba Trammell, our council person, like she was a darn dog. And they dog Marty out, and the way they talk to Reba Trammell, they all should go to jail. You hear what I say? And one girl had the nerve to say to me, I wish you would mention my name. Well, you got your wish. Jackie Bowling of RCAP has been committing voter fraud for the last 20 years. Jackie, I want you to know you got your uh, wish so the people can uh, investigate. If you're going to use names, I I'm need to tell the truth. I, to I found out Ellen Robinson that you we have here. paid people to turn our house up for a whole year. People have confessed that you 
paid them to hurt me like that. You don't have to be afraid of me. You have 30 seconds. I don't bite. You pay people to destroy everything that I work for. I dress down and there I must be beautiful or something. You got to do all that to hurt me. You scared that the real people will vote me in? Well, guess what, boo? It's going to happen. You get ready. Like I said, at that jail, I hope they build a special suite for some of you all. And Reva, you do good. Marty, you do good. Most of the people do not go out of their area to work. Anybody that calls you all for help, you all come. Keep up the good work. Don't let that girl Dawn Page and that dirty crew discourage you. Because people love you and what you do. Ms. Carl, your time is up. 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 Good luck, Johnny. Your time is up. Johnny Walker, be there. Okay, we're going to go. We're going to recess. We're going to recess. Don't put your hands on her. Don't put your hands on her. We're going to recess. Don't put your hands on her. That's it. Okay. Into recess. Come on, get ready. You go to recess and don't come back.
Madam President, that concludes the reading of this evening's consent agenda. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there anyone from Mr. Hilbert, did you have any questions you want to make on the consent agenda? Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. We have a uh, resolution in tonight's uh, consent agenda to uh, encourage people to vote no on the constitutional amendment on the ballot in, uh, in November. Uh, this is, uh, like a lot of things these days, or a few things, this is an answer uh, to a problem that doesn't exist. The eminent domain laws in the Commonwealth of Virginia are pretty strict and it's an overreaction to a U.S. Supreme Court decision. Uh, the General Assembly uh, has decided to uh, put forward to the voters a constitutional amendment. Uh, the Constitution of Virginia should not be uh, changed at the drop of a hat, particularly for a problem that doesn't exist. And so we are asked to uh, vote on this on November the 6th. Uh, it'll be the ballot initiative number one, and uh, this resolution asks that people uh, vote no on that ballot. Uh, the main thing that this does is require compensation for the value of the property, including lost profits, lost access, lost assets, and damage to residual property caused by the taking. This will uh, incur numerous expenses for localities that we currently do not have, and that's, that's a real troubling event, and then it will raise the cost of all uh, public works projects in the future. Uh, there's been no taking of property in recent history uh, for economic development purposes. They have to be for a, uh, and that would be in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We have strict laws now, and we don't need an amendment to Constitution. Uh, and further, uh, the Virginia Municipal League and the Virginia Association of Counties have both uh, expressed opposition to uh, this authority. So I would ask that the voters in the city of Richmond in particular, or excuse me, and voters in the Commonwealth as a whole to reject this constitutional amendment. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Any other comments on the consent agenda at this time? Question. Oh, question. Yes, Mr. Jones. Uh, item number seven. Um, uh, 2180. Can somebody explain what this paper is about? Good evening. I'm Nolan Blackwood, the property owner. The purpose of that SUP is a property that I purchased last... Wait a minute, sir. Excuse me. We're going to let somebody from the ministry oh, oh, okay. and you can, If you want, you can come back and tell us what a great idea it is. But we're going to then... No, no, now that I don't know what property it is, I don't, I don't even have to ask. I'm good. Okay. Uh, you did a great job, sir. I didn't recognize that property. Oh, you're good at it. No, it's great. Thank you. I'm stuck. I just need to get back to uh, Mr. Gilbert's comments on the eminent domain paper for constitutional amendment. I want to thank Mr. Gilbert for putting that in our um, introducing the paper that addresses that. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. It's a very important issue for the voters to know that that would restrict some of our capabilities for um, moving forward. Is there anyone in the audience to speak in opposition to any of these papers? Anyone to speak in favor of? Okay, Mr. Hatcher, and I think there's someone else back there. Mr. Hatcher, are you in favor or against? Okay. Do you have a particular against at this time? I want to talk on the issue number. I have number 22, uh, resolution number 2012, R131. I've been in the city of Richmond, my name is Donald Hatch. I've been in the city of Richmond for 72 years. I'm a little tired of seeing the city getting money 
This item here is talking about getting up. Ten million dollars from the federal government talking about to provide maintenance and construction of system to certain transportation projects. So we got one of the largest bus services in the city of Richmond that I've seen in many years but that hasn't changed because of all racial. When are we going to deal with the racial problem in the city of Richmond? How come you got a bus that don't run in white areas because white folks say they don't want blacks riding the bus to go somewhere to steal? What say we got to be stealing? It's a serious problem in this city. We got nine council folks. We got segregated schools in this city. We got all the problems in this city. We got problems in, 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 throughout the city. When you walk through the neighborhoods, sidewalks are broken, filth, trash in the alleys. Alleys haven't been cleaned in years. And we keep playing these racial games. We might even consider uh, American citizens being black in America, and we fell for the okie doke, but I'm an African American black. I ain't no African American black, I'm an American citizen, and I'm tired of foolishness. Why I gotta keep living under this mess? Why we keep taking money that don't benefit the citizens of Richmond, give the little services to the citizens of Richmond, in all cases, it don't get no better here in Richmond. Nobody wants to deal with the problem. We got one of the damnedest racial problems in the, in the state of the United States of America. And they ain't getting no better. And I'm tired of foolishness. I serve this country. Sat on the line waiting, knowing that if anything happened, I wouldn't be alive in 12 days. I ain't never forgot it. I've been on service 50 some years. You got to live under that kind of stuff talking about protecting the people of America and you ain't getting protected. I'm a little sick of this foolishness. I'm an American citizen and an American citizen. I don't want to hear nothing about what, 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 you're an African American, black, or nothing else. I want every right that I'm entitled to. Ten million dollars you got here, it don't spell out how it's going to be spent or nothing else. You got buses. When I was a kid coming up in Richmond 50 years ago, they had a bus that could catch me in the rest of 15 minutes. Now you stand out there, I don't have to catch a bus. It's nothing but foolishness. Bus don't go here, don't run on Sunday, don't run on Saturday. Why don't somebody in this city wake up? I hate to come down here and keep raising cane. But I need to come down here every day. You ought to have this session every day so I can come down here and raise cane. I'm tired of foolishness. It's unnecessary that folks that live in this city keep taking it, don't say it, I'm fine. They can keep quiet all they want, but I'm going to die talking. And they have to check me when I die. It's <laughs> going to finish. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hedger. Is there anyone else to speak in opposition to any of these papers? Okay. Is there anyone to speak in favor? Here we go. Good evening, City Council. Uh, my name is Michael Gilbert, and tonight I speak before you as the Executive Director of Ryan Richmond, which is a 501c3 nonprofit here in the Richmond area. And I'm speaking specifically to support item 7 and item 21. I would like the uh, Council to note that I, I'm with our free, so I'll be joining or enjoying the uh, new grounds of the Redskins by biking out there on Lee Street and the Sheriffs. Uh, but specifically to item 21, the East Coast Greenway is a 2,900 mile stretch from Maine to Florida. It's longer than the Appalachian Trail, but essentially the Appalachian Trail for bicyclists. And by you supporting that, not only do you also support Bike Route 1 coming through the uh, city of Richmond and exercise and fitness, but you also help strengthen Richmond as a healthy city and as a diverse city. Now, diverse city offers multiple transit options to its citizens, which the East Coast Greenway encourages. And again, it is a step in the right direction for us towards 2015 and the World Road World Cycling Championships. For item seven, I support it because I know uh, Mr. Stevens, who is here tonight, is a great community-oriented fellow who has an excellent bicycle shop business and services many of the men, women, and children throughout the neighborhood and also on the, in the neighborhood of Oregon Hill on South Wall Street. So I ask that you both, or all rather, uh, support this, uh, and specifically item 7 and 29. Thank you. 
Anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of any favor on the consent agenda? Back to council for discussion. Call the question. Madam President. Yes, sir. I didn't know it was 16. Um, has to do with uh, leasing space, uh, as I understand it, uh, along Admiral Street for the purpose of the Department of Recreation uh, to house its administrative uh, offices and I suspect some storage in the hand. Uh, no doubt that they need this. here at the City Hall, uh, juggling needs to take place, and so uh, and I understand the director's uh, desire uh, to move his managers and directors, I mean our managers and, and supervisors under one roof. Uh, but we just approved the paper that uh, allows for the leasing of property for the schools with essentially tax forgiveness for the landlord, we're talking about leasing this property when she owns property. Um, we've got the real school. You know, I'm curious to know if anyone, uh, Dr. Merrifield or anyone, uh, can tell us whether any consideration was made of, of using uh, the real school. It sits up at Azalea Avenue, it's been empty for years. Solidly built, great building, significant space. Um, uh, we got companies sitting uh, totally unproductive. Apparently, in fairly decent shape, it wasn't closed because of the of, of the building was credit. Um, and I don't know whether the need for square footage matches up with uh, with that space there. Does anyone can Tell us whether that building was even considered before we go into a lease where we already currently are not paying taxes. I mean, paying, uh, paying a lease. Good, good, good afternoon, Madam Chair, uh, Chairman, members of uh, Council. Uh, Councilman Jewel, we did uh, review that particular property and tour the property. And simply stated, it's just too small. Uh, we are looking to consolidate uh, all of, as many of our operations as we possibly can into divisions. We have approximately 10 different divisions that are operating throughout the city. And that's inefficient in terms of what we could be doing in terms of managing our operations. We're needing probably at minimum of 15,000 square feet uh, to, to, uh, to, to manage uh, in, a, uh, in a much improved environment. The other piece is the storage, which may be just as important, maybe more. The storage needs that we have in operating the number of programs throughout the city um, for example, cultural arts along we estimate need maybe eight to nine thousand square feet just for storage. Just for storage. So this property, and by the way, it is a sublease um, from the housing authority. Um, fortunately, provides us with the most ideal space. The Department of Recreation Department has um, been able to. Uh, identify and possibly secure in many, many years. We are just um, ecstatic with the opportunity to move from a decentralized management operation to a centralized operation in addition to being able to provide adequate storage for our cultural arts, our sports, our park division, our facilities division, and we could go on and on, even, even including some of the needs for cemeteries and so forth. I think oftentimes, just to conclude, I'm going to pick on a couple of cultural arts a little bit. You know, when you go to the movies and you hear about how many thousands and actually millions of dollars they spend 
on casting a, uh, a movie and producing a movie, uh, I think the next time you hear that, think about us in cultural arts and the programs that we offer throughout this city in terms of the inventory that's necessary, the props, the signs, the costumes, all of these things have to be stored somewhere and they have to be stored in a proper, appropriate environment. So this is what we're trying to do and to my surprise, we were fortunate enough, enough to, to locate a facility that's doing something that I never thought I would see in my tenure here in, in uh, Richmond, Virginia. It's, it's a really a, an opportunity. Our staff is excited and I think the efficiency that it will bring at the management programming level uh, is, is uh, uh, very, very desirable uh, today with what we are trying to uh, move towards uh, for the future. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. The, uh, um, my biggest concern is that we're living, we, we, we're operating in space today that belongs to the city and rent free, and now we're going into the lease and spend uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars more. But there's no doubt about it. Um, uh, City Dance, for instance, uh, uh, with all of their costumes, and they, they have to use at varying times of the year in EP store. But they, they had that stuff primarily at the landmark. They got booted out of there uh, with the renovation. Uh, there's no doubt that the space is needed for storage. Um, I don't want to take anything from that. I'm just curious to know if we match, uh, matched up or Examine uh, the amount of square feet that we've got in usable city on the hills. Um, if you're comfortable that that's been done, uh, then, um, then uh, I'll give a rest. We did, and I appreciate that. Uh, uh, those words. We, we did, in fact, we did a tour of that particular building, and actually, we were looking at that potentially for uh, assistance that we needed right there at Pine Camp.
Then, Madam Clerk, at this time, I believe we have no expedited resolution, so I'll go right to the approval of minutes. The minutes to be approved for this evening are from Monday, October the 8th, informal and formal sessions of council. Mr. Tyler, will you make that motion for the approval of the minutes? Certainly. You're now voting on Mr. Tyler's motion to approve the minutes as read. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Framel? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. Those minutes have been approved. Thank you. At this time, uh, we'll go to reports and announcements. I'll start with Mr. Tyler. Do you have any reports or announcements, Mr. Tyler? Actually, uh, no, I don't. So I'm going to pass. Okay. Ms. Travel? Thank you, Madam President. I know that um, on October the 18th, last Thursday, Chief Brian Millwood and his officers drove there in the Oak Grove area. And I've had many phone calls where the citizens were so grateful and thankful that Chief um, Millwood took his time to be with them and talk to them and knock on their doors and ask them, you know, what some of the issues that they had in their community. And like I said, it was, the, the citizens were very grateful for all this help and for being there and listening to them. So I want to thank the chief and all of his officers, his majors, and his staff for being there and walking in the other road and the capital area. This right here is your first one for You call 646-1526, that's 646-1526. The firefighters will come to your house and they will install the smoke alarm for you for free. If it needs a battery, they'll put the batteries in it. Right now in the city of Richmond, this is the only thing free. So please, please give them a call so that they can um, come to your home and or your apartment or to your business and give you and these um, free smoke alarms up for you. Because everyone knows that these smoke alarms do save your life save your home and save your pets. So please give them a call again, 646-1526. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chan. Thank you, Eva. Mr. Thank you, Madam President. I simply want to uh, encourage Richmond citizens to get out to vote on November for steps. It's our opportunity to ensure that our voices are heard for our vote, and uh, this is uh, an opportunity to really determine the leadership uh, in our city, in our commonwealth, and in our nation. So uh, again, November 6th, if there are any questions, uh, please give our registrar a call at 646-5950. Uh, you can go as early as 6 a.m. to cast your vote before you head off to work or other uh, responsibilities. But you have the opportunity to select, uh, elect your council members, your mayor's school board, Uh, 
uh, know our neighbors better. Uh, it's an opportunity to begin to move us back towards the rebuilding of the village. Uh, we keep talking about the takes the village, to raise the child, well it does, and it did for those of us 40 years old and older, we remember that village. Sadly, those of us 40 years and younger may not, and they have missed considerably. We keep trying to put one program after another program, and this model and that model for improving school and reforming schools, but in fact, the problem, the solution to the problem is really in neighborhoods. Reestablishing a culture uh, uh, where children can be calmed down uh, and prepared and so that they're ready to learn when they get to school. And that's what's broke. The village has been broke for 25 years, and those block parties used to facilitate that kind of village environment. We got to go back to it. So I preach my sermon for the day, and I'm done. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Tomorrow evening at 5 o'clock, we have our, our uh, October district meeting, 5515 Bryce Lane. Uh, on that, we will have a report on the Health Street Re Revitalization Study. That's, that's quite interesting. We've been talking about that for a long time. They will give us the, the, the latest information on that. We will also have an update on the paving that was done in the Farm uh, Subdivision. They put a slurry code finish on there and uh, had some questions about that. So we're having the Folks come and tell us about that particular product. In addition to that, we've got an update on our Daytona Drive prop property. That's the dump, the prior dump. We've got the green well cleaned up, but we're going to give you a little bit more information on that tomorrow evening. And finally, we will give you an update on the Hull and Thurwind project. project. We're moving that forward, and we will give you some more details. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Samuel. activities going on in the second district. First, thanks to everybody that came out either to West Bay Street or to Historic Jackson Ward Association on Saturday, October 20th, this past Saturday, for a cleanup effort. I was over at the Jackson Ward one and did, we did a lot of good work. Appreciate everybody that comes out to volunteer the time to keep, keep our city clean. The Robinson Street Association meeting, new and former Robinson Street meeting, Association meeting, November meeting has been and, excuse me, October meeting has been canceled. It will be meeting in November, but tomorrow next meeting has been canceled. On Wednesday, I am hosting a town hall meeting to discuss some traffic calming options at Monument Avenue and Allen Avenue. It's where the Lee Monument is. Last week, a gentleman walking his two daughters and his wife were, uh, he, was, he was hit in severely injured in the car accident there. So we're, um, we see somewhere between 8 and 18 accidents a year at this intersection. And we're going to have a meeting at the Orchard House School, which is 500 North Allen Street, at 6 p.m. on Wednesday night to discuss what we can do. Public Works will be there, traffic engineering will be there to discuss those issues. For something more exciting, 6 a.m. on Friday, October 27th, the Yorktown will dock at Intermediate Terminal. We'll set sail shortly thereafter. If you have young children that are willing to be up that early, it ought to be an exciting time for them to see a very big ship on the James River. Thanks so much to everybody for a great meeting tonight. It's been quite exciting. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the uh, Education and Human Services meeting for November uh, would normally fall the day before Thanksgiving, so we will be changing that date. Uh, the tentative date is November the 28th, but we will uh, have a final date for you at the next uh, meeting of council, the first meeting in November. Uh, we'll never 
two meetings uh, scheduled for the month of October. Um, one is at the Inhati Park uh, Community Center on Thursday, October the 25th, which is their standard uh, fourth Thursday meeting. There will be a lot of information in regards to the renovation that is taking place there, the schedule for that renovation. Also, on the 31st of October, the city uh, is having a October Fest uh, at the park as well for children up to the age of 12. The Sunday Tennis Association, which is located on 4th Avenue at the high rise building, will be having their uh, community meeting on October the 3rd as well, from 6 to 7, and that's at 16. 11, 4, 5, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. Thank you, Ms. Robertson. And I just want to thank Western Hills Merchants Association last Saturday and we did clean up, we cleaned up all around the uh, commercial area. And I want to thank them for their efforts to make our community a better place. Um, I would like to re reiterate what some of my fellow council people said. Uh, election day is coming up. Please get out. Whatever you look for, please go and vote. Um, it's an important right, and uh, we need to use it. But this time, we please have the introduction of the paper. Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Thank you very much. Also, <laughs> Style Magazine gives out uh, 40 under 40 um, awards every year. 40 top people in the region who are under 40. It was such a popular um, issue that I never got my hands on it. But Mr. Samuels did, and so we want to say congratulations to two of our city employees who made the list, Lori Markham and Michael Gilbert. And so congratulations. Congratulations. This goes to show we have great employees in the city of Virginia. Very good. And now, we have the introduction of the papers. Thanks. Madam President, new legislation for this evening is as follows. Ordinance number 2012-195 to amend the pay plan adopted by Ordinance 93-117-159 to include the classification of principal capital projects management in the unclassified service. Council Supplemental Operations Standing Committee, October 25th. Council's Public Hearing Day, November 12th. Ordinance number 2012-196 to authorize the CAA, CAO to accept $10,031,620 from the Federal Transit Administration and to appropriate increase to the FY 12-13 capital budget for the purpose of funding capital improvements at Main Street Station. Planning Commission on November the 5th, Council's Public Hearing Date, November 12th. Ordinance number 2012-197 to authorize the CAO to accept $2,507,906 from the Virginia Department of Railroad Public Transportation and to appropriate increase to the FY1213 capital budget for the purpose of funding Main Street Station Phase 3 development. Planning Commission, November 5th, Council's Public Hearing Date, November 12th. Ordinance number 2012-198 authorized the CAO to execute an amended non-exclusive license agreement between the city and the Megabus Northeast LLC for the purpose of increasing the license fee and extending Megabus Northeast LLC non-exclusive rights to use certain bus stop, passenger boarding, and waiting area at the flats of the Redway across from Main Street Station. Council's Finance and Economic Development Standing Committee, November 15th. Council's public hearing date November 26. Ordinance number 2012-199 to amend and reordain Ordinance number 2012-45-60 for the purpose of appropriating an additional $4,402,955 in state revenues and revenue classified as other revenue. Council's Finance and Economic Development Standing Committee, November 15. Council's Public Hearing Date, November 26. Ordinance number 2012-200 to authorize a special use of 407 South Cherry Street for the purpose of permitting multifamily use in 811 Albemarle Street for the purpose of establishing a single-family dwelling.
well in a lot of tweets to the service of property accessory to a multi-family use of months or the terms and conditions. Council's public hearing date November 12th. Ordinance number 2012-201 to amend the city code by adding a new section for the purpose of encouraging the use of green roofs as defined by Virginia Code 58.1-3852 by providing for the processing of building permit applications within 10 business days and of associated plumbing, electrical, and mechanical permit applications within five business days. Council's Land Use, Housing, and Transportation Standing Committee meeting November 20th. Council's Public Hearing date November 26th. Ordinance number 2012-202 to adopt an amendment to the master plan for the city to be known as the Richmond Riverfront Plan. Council's Land Use, Housing, and Transportation Standing Committee November 20th. Council's Public Hearing date November 26th. Ordinance number 2012-203 to authorize the CAO to execute a master agreement for use of Commonwealth transportation funds between the city and the Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation for the purpose of utilizing grant proceeds from the department. Council's Land Use, Housing and Transportation Standing Committee, November 20th. Council's Public Hearing Date, November 26th. Ordinance number 2012-204 to authorize the CAO to execute a grant agreement between the city and the Federal Transit Administration for the purpose of receiving federal funding in the amount of $10,031,620 to fund the capital improvements at Main Street Station. Council's Land Use, Housing, and Transportation Standing Committee, November 20th. Council's Public Hearing Date, November 26th. Ordinance number 2012-205 to authorize the CAO to execute a project agreement between the use of Commonwealth Transportation Funds for FY 2013 between the city and the Virginia Department of Rail and Public Transportation for the purpose of receiving a grant of $2,507,906 to fund the rehabilitation and renovation of Main Street Station and associated architectural and engineering services activities. Council's Land Use, Housing, and Transportation Standing Committee, November 20th. Council's Public Hearing Date, November 26th. Ordinance number 2012-206 to authorize the CAO to execute a contract modification of a one to the Virginia Water Quality Improvement Fund Point Service Source Grant and Operation and Maintenance Agreement, number 440-S-09-02 for the purpose of increasing the grant amount by $4,456,787 for the Department of Public Utilities Nutrient Reduction Technology Program, modifying the monetary assessment for breach of the agreement and modifying the project schedules required by the agreement. Council's Governmental Operations Standing Committee, no, October 25th. Council's Public Hearing Date, November 12th. Resolution number 2012-R140 to approve the written program outline and budget with project with projected outcomes for the middle school renaissance program and to authorize the expenditure of $366,000 from the Innovation and Excellence in Education Special Fund to Richmond Public Schools Education Foundation, Inc. Council of Education and Human Services Standing Committee, November 21st. Council's Public Hearing Date, Resolution number 2012-R141 to express support for the economic development strategy and package with themes of health, fitness, medicine, and sports involving properties behind the Science Museum of Virginia adjacent to Richmond Community Hospitals and at the former West Hampton School property and participants including the city and the Washington Redskins and Bonas Pua's regional health system. Council's public hearing date, November 12th. Resolution number 2012-R140 to approve the written program outline and budget with the projected outcomes of the middle school renaissance program and to authorize expenditure of $366,000 from the Innovation and Excellence in Education Special Fund to Richmond Public Schools Education Foundation, Inc. Council's Education and Human Services Standing Committee, November 21st. Council's Public Hearing Date, November 26th. Madam President, that is all the new legislation that I have for this evening. Thank you, Madam Clark. And before I adjourn this meeting, if we can 
go back to number 12, and that is the uh, riverfront plan. I believe that is going to, um, I just want to make sure I heard it correctly, that's going to be heard at the next council meeting. Concerning the map, the master plan. Correct. Correct. And that is going. That's going to the November twelfth council meeting. Correct.